Welcome to the Navy's Newscast for Tuesday, December 12, 2023. I'm Donis Wilkinson Keynes. Classmates, I am putting it to you that most of us are sitting here not because of our own efforts, but by the grace of God. The power of prayer and parents, guardians, and family members who refuse to give up on us. We also had some exceptional teachers who pushed, encouraged, motivated, and guided us. And we have the love of our peers and close friends. And today, we simply say thank you. Jaquela Barrett, valedictorian of the 2023 graduating class of the Navy Sixth Form College. Barrett was among 53 students who became graduates of the tertiary level institution on December 5th. She passed the nine Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Examination CAPE units with grade ones in accounting, biology, Caribbean studies, and chemistry. Navy Sixth Form class of 2023, let us strive to be exemplary citizens of our beloved Navy. Let us endeavor to give back to our school, our communities, and our country. There is a lot going on right now, some good and some not so good. Let us be the ones to change what needs to be changed and to hold on to those traditions that make us a proud people. Also recognized for outstanding performances were salutatorian Sarahi Archibald, who passed 10 units with grade ones in Caribbean studies, management of business, and Spanish. 100% passes were achieved in 27 Cape units, with 50 students passing six or more units. Among them, Kayla Daly, who earned grade ones in Caribbean studies and tourism, Karina Grant, who earned grade ones in digital media and tourism, Julissa Griffin, who earned grade ones in environmental science and tourism. Jaden Leibert, who earned grade ones in Caribbean studies and management of business. Chastity Moraine, who earned grade ones in Caribbean studies and law. Tyrese Watts, who earned grade ones in environmental science and tourism. Persia Woodley, who earned grade ones in Caribbean studies and law. Carlin Bowen Tuckett, who earned a grade one in Caribbean studies. Brianna Chapman, who earned a grade one in Caribbean studies. Rebecca Chauti Passard, who earned a grade one in law. Tinaja Jeffers, who earned a grade one in digital media. Tia Kelly, who earned a grade one in environmental science. German Manners, who earned a grade one in environmental science. And Alyssa Taylor, who earned a grade one in digital media. Held under the patronage of Garfield Virgo, the ceremony was chaired by Dwayne Hendrickson with the theme, Education for the Future, Learning, Growing, Succeeding Together. Carolyn David made remarks as Deputy Principal of the Nevis Sixth Form College. Graduates, education for the future is not merely about what your teachers would have t covered from the syllabus or your textbooks. It also encompasses the life lessons that we would have tried to instill in you over the last two years, and those learned from interacting with your peers and friends. These life lessons and characteristics that you have developed will be valuable as you continue to learn, grow, and succeed. You are not limited by your current circumstances. There are so many opportunities for continuous learning and growth. You were not created for an ordinary life. Seize every opportunity for self-improvement. Unleash your potential. Expand your horizons. Take pride in doing your best as you continue to learn, grow, and succeed. Zenobia Johnson of Nevis, who goes by the stage name of Mighty Zen, is the winner of the primary category of the Cable and Greenhouse Band Junior Calypso Monarch Competition for Sugar Mass 52. The competition took place on Sunday, December 10th at the Marriott Resort Plaza in St. Kitts. Mighty Zen won from a field of five participants, accumulating 390 points for her performance of the song, All Hands.
placing first runner-up was Lady Faith with Prince Kai placing second runner-up. Meantime, Princess Nevea, also of Nevis, placed second runner-up in the secondary category. That competition was won by Starboy Nicholas, while Mighty J placed first runner-up. Still to come, then gave virus transmission in St. Kitts and Nevis. The details after this break. As a responsible taxpayer, you help to finance free health care at all health centers on Nevis. Thank you for putting country above self. This message was brought to you by the Inland Revenue Department, Nevis. Be a responsible citizen. Welcome back. According to the St. Kitts and Nevis Information Service, notice has been given for a sitting of the National Assembly to be held at the National Assembly Chamber's Government Headquarters, Bastis St. Kitts, at 10 a.m. on Wednesday, December 13, 2023. During this session, Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, the Honorable Dr. Terence Drew will present the Government of St. Kitts and Nevis's financial statement and budgetary proposal for the 2024 fiscal year. The debate on the budget will continue from Thursday, December 14, 2023. During 2023, the Ministry of Health has reported 185 laboratory-confirmed cases of dengue, with 47 cases for St. Kitts and 138 cases for Nevis. In an advisory issued on December 11th, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Hazel Laws reminded that the most effective way to avoid getting dengue is to prevent mosquito bites. We can mitigate the impact and the spread of dengue by taking 12 actions. Personal protective measures during outdoor activities include application of topical mosquito repellents to expose skin or clothing. Wear protective clothing like long pants and long sleeved tops. Use indoor protection including approved household insecticide aerosol products or mosquito coils and bed nets if mosquitoes are prevalent. Use window and door screens to reduce the probability of mosquitoes entering the house. Protect your homes, schools, and offices by disposing of all bottles, cans, and water-holding containers in an approved refuse bin with appropriate covers. Change and replenish water in vases daily. Change and replenish pet and animal drinking containers daily. Keep lawn, grass, and vegetation trimmed. Owners and caretakers of empty lots have a responsibility to keep the vegetation trimmed. Tire operators should store all used and new tires in a dry place. Jelly or coconut operators should adequately dispose of empty coconut shells at the end of each workday and report any body of stagnant water to the local health department. If you are experiencing fever, joint pains, pain behind eyes and a rash, you should seek medical care at the nearest health facility. That's it for this edition of the Nevis Newscast. On behalf of all of us here at the Department of Information, thank you for viewing.